Hello. Good day. Hello, hello. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Is there audio? Hello. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Great. Okay. All right. Let's get into it. I have, uh, what is it, uh, 5.15 already. Um, yeah. I have an hour. <clears throat> it's just an hour. So, uh, but I did want to get a stream in because I want to talk to you guys about a project that I'm going to be uh, providing a cover for. It's uh, something kind of near and dear to my heart, not because of something um, I created per se, uh, but it is our our son, uh, Lucas, who uh, has created his first comic. I have it here, Wallow. And uh, oh, he's got like, two different covers. Um, and then there's like a smaller edition, but uh, essentially, let's see it here. Uh, it's, it's not something that he's written and drawn himself. It's very manga inspired, and uh, I'm providing a variant cover. So I'm going to start the cover on stream. Obviously, I'm not going to finish in an hour. So this is kind of my way to show you the creative process, but also kind of plug this project um, and talk a little bit about it something exciting and just in general my thoughts about all this you know it's it's like the first kid in the family who has decided to kind of foray venture out into the uh, comic book arts as it were and uh, so I have a lot of thoughts and feelings and stuff around that obviously pride and, and just very proud of him um, first and foremost but I think as a parent you know you have to, uh, you have to sort of modulate, kind of, and certainly in the position I'm in, it's kind of modulate, kind of how you can help someone on their own creative, you know, aspirational journey. And I think, uh, in some ways, um, it, it, and I don't know how many parents are out there. He's uh, he's going to be 24 this year in, in August, um, and uh, you know, multi-talented kid. Um, uh, but I, I think the thing that like he, he's into acting, he's into uh, gaming, he's into comics, and uh, but the the thing that kind of unifies all his interests, I think, is storytelling at the heart of it. And um, he's always kind of made up characters and, and told stories and funny accents and voices and stuff. And I think uh, some of the mods are putting up some links for you all to check out. But I, I will say one thing, which. You know, I remember when I posted the Instagram post, uh, someone commented, like, because uh, it started a Indiegogo campaign, right, to kind of finance the uh, printing and distribution of it all, Unlo uh, pay for some variant covers, and uh, I just realized I need to get, uh, get um, some artistic tools here. Where is everything? I'll be right back. Hold on one second. One second, one second, one second. All right, I'm back. And uh, so I'll lead with this, which was like, some, 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 someone comments was like, uh, I, I can't remember exactly what they said, but it was something like, why the, why, why, why the rich asking for money? And uh, I, I put up a, a res response and then I deleted the whole thing. And uh, I was just, it was just struck me funny because like there's this whole thing like nepotism, nepo babies and all that. and. And uh, I'm gonna start drawing and talking, but uh, essentially, like, you know, I'm not asking for money because <laughs> I, I I can fund the thing myself, uh, but it's not my project; it's his project. And and I think I, I use an analogy from like video games, like if any of you guys have played MMOs 
where there's multiple players and they can share, they share space together. Um, and if I've been in the world for a long time and you just start, I could easily kind of set you up as a twink or, or you know, a twink. Yeah, you know, you can, you can. Uh, I don't know what the ter term is these days, but you can, you can gift gold and items and, and really kind of set the character up so that they're like super powerful, you know, overpowered, you know, um, at level one. But then I, I feel like it kind of ruins the game, you know, and, uh, and, and if you guys have played any games and when a game's too easy, you, you, you get bored, you lose interest in it. If a game's too hard, um, it, you feel defeated and you kind of give it up, right? So games have to find that sweet spot to keep people engaged, um, uh, give them challenges, but, but allow them to achieve victory every now and then as they defeat bosses and, and, and gain levels. Uh, and, and, and that's very much, I think, an analogy for life, right? And uh, if I was just asking for money, I get it. Criticism, criticism completely valid. But, but you are getting a comic. It's not like it's, I think, the minimum thing tier on the Indiegogo is $10 and $10 you get three comics uh, and a PDF and uh, I feel like for three comics that's a pretty fair price so I, I you know I just wanted to address that uh, I, I don't think it's that's what we're doing uh, and, and I would feel uh, and I would agree with someone if like hey uh, if, if I were sending my kid on a field trip and say hey fund this field trip for for my kid donate money for their airfare and their lunches like yes that that would be reprehensible <laughs> I, I just would not ever do that so i just want to kind of put that out there but also look it, it puts me in a dilemma like i because i could certainly uh make things easier uh so you know as a parent you want to help but at the same time i don't want to ruin the game right and uh so i i think i've been obviously offering advice and um, feedback to his ideas, both on a business level and a creative level. I feel like that's perfectly valid. Um, but he did all the work um, and continues to do all the work. And in fact, he wanted to release this thing like a year ago after he'd just drawn a couple pages, right? Cause, and I know that feeling. And, and those of you who are creatives out there, you know that feeling too. It's like you're you're ready to go. You feel like you can do it. I can do it. No problem. Like it, you're, the appetite exceeds sort of sort of really what what is realistic. And I told him like the the chief obstacle I think that that or the ch ch chief challenge that new creatives have when they start a project is is they're super excited, right? The passion is there, but you got to do the work, and the work can be really sometimes laborious and take take a lot of time and and drawing one page is easy maybe five pages is easy get to 10 20 100 uh, you start to feel the burn right like anyone can sprint 10 feet most people can sprint 10 feet 100 a thousand feet right but run a mile 10 miles right like and that's really what drawing comic books is like i remember that feeling when i started it's a grind. By the time you get to that sixth or seventh issue, you feel it. And you can't stop because you have a schedule. And, and I said, like, the, the thing you could do that really hurt yourself the most at the beginning is promise something and then not deliver. And then, boom, you're out you're out the gates as a professional comic book creator. And you're late on your first assignment, your first job. Like, that that is the worst thing you can do. So, trust me, I've been late on many projects, but... I was on time at the start, at the beginning, right? For the first, actually for the first five or six years until I started Image and then uh, obviously all the business stuff got in the way, right? So you're, so you're going to try to self-publish, do the business stuff and also do write and draw. Like you've got to give yourself time to like relax and, and take a breather between issues. Uh, you got to take into account you might get injured, you might um, uh, have family plans, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so um, I'm going to start on this cover. Uh, what am I going to do? I hadn't really thought about it. This is a big piece of paper. This is cover board, 11 by 17, all right? Things called Wallow, and uh, it's essentially a story about two young brothers uh, whose parents are um, murdered 
and they basically discover sort of a dark secret past, right? The sins of the father, the sins of the parents come to them. Uh, but it starts out very idyllically in that they live in a village on the outskirts of civilization. There's a reason for that. You don't know that at the beginning. So it starts off, uh, they're celebrating a birthday, and, uh, and uh, they end up, the older kid ends up uh, making a flute, a ma sort of a magical, or not magical, like a musical instrument out of a totem that the parents sort of hang in the trees all around the house. And it, it feels very de decorative. And um, little do they know that these totems uh, are, are wards to sort of hide them, make them invisible from forces that they're hiding from, that they're fleeing from or have fled from. And this thoughtful gesture uh, opens the door to a dark force that basically, uh, you know, this is spoilers, right? <laughs> so I should have given you the alert. But anyway, uh, my favorite MMO, uh, my first, I, I think it was EverQuest. My first one was uh, Ultima Online. That was like sort of the gateway drug to it all. And then EverQuest kind of blew it open. And then I played WoW as well, but I think uh, EverQuest was the one I really liked the most. Anyway, so what are we going to do? Uh, you know, as you can see, it's it, he's it, it's not your typical superhero. In fact, it's not. It's a it's a fantasy story, right? If the closest uh, analog would be a sort of anime manga. And if you look even at the cover, right, it's like a sword in the ground, the tree, uh, and this one, it's a looks like a magic uh, ruin or device that's been broken open, right? So it's not in your face sort of traditional Western style comics. But then I'm going to do this cover, and so i mm, like, what am I going to do? Um, this is not my thing, right? I don't really draw, like, like graphic imagery, you know, graphic, uh, graphically designed. Like, you know, you know, I don't do, like, the... I'm not known for drawing, like, a smiley face and putting blood on it. That's, you know, that's, right? It, that's a, a certain type of, of design and, and sort of aesthetic. Uh, um, so... I'm going to do, uh, in the first, second issue, I think there's a battle. So I'm going to, when you see the dark forces arrive, actually it's issue three, issue three. So this is issue one, issue one. And that's the thing. So he's done all these issues and, I, and he's just like chomping at the bit. Can I, can we launch the Indiegogo thing now? No, no. Like it literally was like, you know, uh, you know, take the rocks from my hand, like grasshopper. No, you know, you got to wait. Uh, you gotta get, you know, wipe on, wipe off. You gotta do a lot more, uh, and, uh, get it done. Yes. Oh, he's in chat. Lou Grimm. There he is. And Lou, uh, Lou, and <laughs> Lucas, tell me if I'm screwing up anything. I just, you know, I, I think I explained it pretty succinctly, and I didn't want to kind of spoil it and give away a lot of details, but, um, look, it's a very different type of art. Who's calling me? I don't know. That was weird. Okay. Um, okay. So. So I'm gonna cut to. Oh, you know what though? I'm doing something from the third issue for the first issue cover. That doesn't make sense. Or does? Oh, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna. I'm gonna think about it as like a movie poster, right? So um, it's a harbinger of things to come, right? Oh yeah. There's Poop Kid. Hey, we have. Do we have, what mods do we have here? I think it's just PK today. Is Kirihiko in? It's very late. Yeah. Uh, Kirihiko lives in Die Schweiz, in Switzerland, so it's late for her. And I think um, uh, Crispy is uh, traveling the world. Anyway, so... Um, Alright, so as a movie poster, so in the movie poster, you're going to traditionally see sort of some figure work here and then larger imagery up here and so I'm thinking down here I am going to have in the foreground the kids the two boy two brother and it's going to be an upshot 
And, and maybe they're looking off like, you know. So this really is a, a stream about composing a cover. And these kids don't have like a superhero build. They, they're, they're, you know, they, uh, they look like kids. When I say kids, like, I think if I had to gather, one is 10-ish and the other one is like 18-ish, right? They're twigs, yes. JWT cosplay, uh, big fan, first time chatter. What are we drawing? I, I'm laying out a cover for my son's first comic book. So uh, we have like 45 minutes or so. So it's really about composing a cover. And so can you see this? Yeah, you can see it. All right. In fact, let me just um, pull this back a little bit. So you can see more of it. There we go. All right. So in my head, I'm thinking it's these two kids. You know, it's not like giant size X-Men number one where they're leaping forward. Uh, you know, it's it's two kids like looking forward. Uh, these trees that he has are kind of uh, an interesting artistic aesthetic element that he kind of carries through. So I'm thinking about that. Um, there's these evil forces um, that are sort of like, they look like shadows. They look like wraiths. Um, they're 8 and 12. 8 and 12. Okay, I'm way off. All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay. The dark forces, right? So since I have a larger figure here, the larger element's going to go sort of uh, catty corner, right? In opposition as opposed to stacked on top. And plus visually, this is where I have that negative space, right? And then I'm gonna put the mother here. Again, spoiler alert, she's sort of a badass um, mage. But you think she, she and her spouse or husband are just sort of common villagers. And see that maybe she's in, maybe been in some battle. And we can put her clawed like hand there. Some sort of energy coming off of that. And then the pops we'll go down here. I need a. Let me, hold on a second. I need this up here. We'll go down here. But basically, it starts off very idyllic, celebrating um, the kid's birthday. Um, the uh, the removal of the ward allows the villager's homestead to be seen by the forces of evil, and they come basically and attack. And uh, and then our two heroes find themselves orphaned and on the run and you discover that there's a whole history behind them of how they ended up in this spot, so, sort of a secret destiny or, or a past that is exposed, and um, a reason why sort of these dark forces are after them. So 
trying to say it in a way so uh, I, I don't completely give it away. But um, okay, and then I'm thinking like this villain has got his fingers like that. And because it's a, a sort of movie poster like thing, you want you can put all these sort of elements that are harbingers or symbols of something that will be important in the story. And uh, I think these ravens or these kind of birds are important. So maybe I'll put a couple of them there. Although it looks like. It's on his head, so sort of a graphic design element that goes like this, and 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 these are placeholders, right? Like the kids are just standing upright, erect. It just doesn't um, very. It's, it's static. I know they don't. I don't want them in superhero poses or like they're bending, like crouching, like ninjas. They're that's not the vibe they have. Um, but I, I will introduce something in a second which will humanize them more, show their relationship, I think, to one another is kind of in my head. Um, but right now I'm just sort of laying out shapes, and this is kind of how it work. Oh, Grand Animal Bertus. Yeah, the flute will be in here. Um, that's this object here. And uh, anyway, so if you go on Indiegogo, and I think uh, PK put up the link, uh, you get the first three volumes. They're not, they're gonna be, um, This is, these are oversized, this is undersized, right? But we're gonna print them at normal complex size. These were one-offs to basically see how this printer um, did the work. And these are gonna be the, sort of the first edition that you're gonna see on Indiegogo. Um, I, it's really the start to kind of build up a core fan group um, of the concept. And then I think Luke is going to uh, shop it around with publishers or maybe even um, like an online publisher, or not online publisher, like an online platform um, to get broader distribution. And those will have, I think, different covers. It'll be the same interiors, but like sort of this, you know, the, the, the mass printing sort of, if, if, if anything, this is like the pre-screening editions and then there's like sort of but anyway, uh, one of the uh, tiers you can unlock the, this backpack. <laughs> it's tiny. Uh, it's a mini backpack. Is what we're, um, and uh, it, it, the, the, the really awesome thing about this is that this is, this is handmade. This is like, so uh, Lucas ordered sort of generic white mini backpacks. The art here is hand painted, right? You can feel like the texture of it. And then it's got these elements that uh, are from the story. This is sort of like an astroturf, fake grass, and uh, um, and then it has braided um, braided. Uh, what are these straps here, right? To kind of customize it, give a different look. And then here is like uh, sort of the, the the flute that he made real. So you get that too, and so I, I think that's like a keychain, if you want it to be, or you can just he just attach it to here. So I think um, he'll be drawing a lot and manufacturing these all by hand. So uh, and so we talked about as as we as he put together this whole campaign, like what's feasible, what's doable, what are margins? You gotta you know how, how do you handle volume, all these kinds of things, which I think um, all take time and uh, you need to um, sort of factor them into your delivery dates in terms of the story. All right, so basically I've got the gist of the layout here. I'll turn it this way so you can kind of see it. Um, I'm thinking
Yeah, there's a, all this this other uh, elemental type thing creature, which is pretty cool. So I'm thinking. Okay, let's let's do this. Is there something in the elemental? Go like this. And the designs are a pretty simple. Like it, it's not new to fifty two, <laughs> you know, with all sorts of costume lines and detail. Uh, so this this creature is probably the, the closest thing to like a Western comic book in terms of like a, a figure that. And then if I put that creature there, and I had put this ground here, I just lower the ground, and now I can put the kids here. And so they're a lot smaller, so in my head I'm going, how do I make them pop more? And I think it would probably be in the coloring, like they'll probably be warmer, and the background will be cooler, or they'll be more lit, and the background will be darker, right? So, um, that's Gollum, Pas Companion, yes, yes. So, so let's go ahead and construct the figures like this. It's an upshot like that. We'll continue with the upshot. Um, because I reduced them to size, I don't have to like necessarily do the sort of the. Uh, now I want to do the larger figure on this side, basically, and it works because they're a lot smaller. But before when. When the older brother was up here, um, this figure was, I don't even know how to express it mentally, <laughs> you know, it, it's contrapositioning, uh, it counterbalance, count, that's it, counterbalance, counterbalance, right? But now that they're smaller, I don't have to counterbalance it as much. I don't have to worry about that element, okay? And I'm drawing with this very, uh, it's a mechanical pencil. The lead is pretty thick compared to like, here, this is a 0.7 millimeter, so you can see the thickness of the tip. Alright, uh, what I like about this is that it's a sketching pencil, so it's not about creating details, it's about creating form, forms, shapes, and then, so maybe sort of the paternal brother has his hand paternal yeah but yeah he can be paternal like he's a brother but he feels like the father once the f parents are killed right um right kind of had, had now having his hand on that shoulder versus around holding him Kind of have to weigh. They're they're like, it, it's crazy, right? A hand on a shoulder versus the other shoulder imparts a different vibe, a different emotional um, feeling. So think about it, uh, right? This is almost like you're gonna allow some freedom, some independence, but you're hold like, but you're also watching and guiding them. Around the other shoulder is more protective, more sheltering, more pulling in. It's, it conveys a lot more emotion. Uh, but I'm wondering, I, I, I kind of like this more right now. I can always change it. And let's bring up the waist here because it is an upshot. So uh, that's the eye line, that's the mouth, the nose, all right, mouth, eye line, ears are lower on the head. And right, that's like if they could shoot beams out of their eyes, it would go like this, right? 
And I like this creature because uh, it it shows. All right, so you got the young heroes at the center. They look vulnerable. They are searching, literally searching with their eyes. Right, that's the emotion that we're 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 we're, we're conveying. Immediately behind them, you have this horrific monster creature, threatening, looming over them, threatening them physically. Sort of like an alien from that movie. Debating whether I, I draw the legs. I, I put one knee here, one over here. Because uh, he could easily disappear into that shape. And then, because the whole environment is in this sort of hamlet, this little... Well, hamlet's a village, I guess. It, it's more like a little farm. It's a little cabin. It's a cabin in the middle of the woods. So I want to show that greenery, right? A grove. There we go. A grove. All right, so here's the grove. Now, uh, this peaceful oasis is destroyed by, by sort of these wraith-like creatures. So let's go ahead and draw in the cabin, which I think I have reference. And look, this is really funny. Uh, I, and I told Lucas this, like when you start, because it's your first project, by the time you finish it or get into like four issues, it's your style is going to change. And it's already really interesting because he's working on issue five, four, five, something like that. And already it's already changed, right? The proportions, the energy, because he's learning. I mean, when you first start, you think, A, you're, you're, you're really good. <laughs> and I'm just telling you, like everyone, everyone thinks they're amazing when they start. And two, they, they think like, um, uh, uh, I got it all figured out. And the truth is, as you do more and more work, you discover, well, I thought I was good, but this is better. So what does that make what I did originally, right? So it's kind of like when I started on Alpha Flight, I thought it was pretty good. I thought I was like channeling John Byrne and really just, like, this is going to blow people away. And uh, it didn't. Uh, it was, you know, it was very rough. It was very, uh, you know, and it took um, probably until I got in the Punisher, but then even the Punisher, I started inking myself and it uh, probably wasn't until Punisher issue four or five or five and six, the one where I teamed up Wolverine where it kind of unlocked something. But even then, that wasn't kind of the style I got, like, Every year, year after drawing 12 issues, 10 to 12 issues a year, the style, the confidence, the ability moved up, right? So I think those would be really interesting. I, I told him, like, by the time you finish or get near the end, you're going to want to go back and redraw all your first chapters. Anyway, so, so it starts off in this very, I think, more of a cartoony, almost like a kid's book style. Um, it's pretty... Uh, abstracted I don't know if that's the right word right like like the uh, and it's it, it draws I think heavily from like manga in terms of like how smoke and energy and movement is conveyed versus like a Western comic and then by the time you get to the third issue um, right you're already seeing um, more exaggeration more power in the uh, in the composition the perspective Things like that. But it is very imaginative. There's like a whole world that he has created. And uh, look at all these like random like creatures. Like it's, uh, there's a lot there. And I know there's a lot more, right? He's got it all, like, there's a lot going on. And I, I'm gonna probably put some of that back here, but uh, I was looking for the, the village. The village, not the village, their cabin, their little house. Um, and all this art was done uh, digitally on, on using Procreate, which is, I think, amazing in and of itself. All right. Um, I don't know the cabin's in issue three. Lou, Grim. 
What issue should I find the cabin in? What's the easiest? Oh wait, I've got this creature too. There's a lot of already like by issue three things really like blow. So it's it's a slow build um, because it's one big story uh, that's happening. Huh? Issue two. Issue two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Issue two. Oh yeah. Okay. There we go. All right, issue two. All right. It's like a little grass. It's like a little hut with a grass roof. He probably would object, but I, I think all the designs are kind of cute. Uh, which is great because they're, it's a nice juxtapositioning against these more sort of horrific images that are kind of nightmarish, right? So here's like essentially their, their cabin, but it's been attacked, and so now it's kind of in shambles, right? Right, and, and maybe it's on fire. Okay, see that? And then that'll give me um, sort of the warm light on this side that will make these figures pop. And then everything will be kind of cooler and more blue here. And, uh, and then over here, I think I want to put, uh, there's another horrific, it's almost like a two-faced creature. He has names for all these things. I, I'm just not as tuned in to this world, obviously. Uh, it's like this, this kind of creature right here, you can see it. But there's like two heads. Four arms. So I'm thinking it'll go. Like right here. So that's the beak nose of that one. That one. So. What's cool about doing a cover like this is uh, for the first issue, a lot of these elements aren't in the first issue. The whole idea is uh, it's a hook, right? It's, an, it's a teaser. And then by putting this here, maybe the arm, like there's a bunch of arms, like, like and maybe, maybe the hand kind of, like it's, they're really, um, strange-looking creatures, right? So uh, the idea is it's like it's doing this kind of thing. Can I? Yes. Okay, you can see it. Right? And, uh, So that's the ground. And this flute. Where can I put the flute? It would be weird to have it here, like. Maybe I put it here in the extreme foreground. It looks like a rock, right? But what's cool about it is that it's a subtle thing. Suspender. 
like everything is is really um, there's a lot of world building like down to the fashion um, to the uh, designs of the monsters and stuff um, I won't give him a fishing pole. It kind of starts off with them fishing. I don't think I don't think that fishing is a big element in the story. Yeah. Maybe he's got his arm behind his back like that. All right. See what I'm saying? He's a little kid. What do little kids do with their hands? They pick their nose or whatever. I mean, uh... right. I mean, you can have this giant like machine gun right here. Sorry, that's not in the story. <laughs> uh, right now, Lucas is. What are you doing? Um, He uh, he wouldn't have his arms crossed, right? He's not confident. Look, he's got a staff, a stick, a walking stick. Perfecto. Walking stick isn't going to scare anyone, but it does convey this emotion of uh, an explorer. A traveler, right? Someone who needs assistance, right? Makes them like a walking stick has a lot of implies a lot of things. All those things I just mentioned. Does he have both hands on the walking stick? Maybe he does. Like, look. There's one hand. So he probably looks a little more confident than he does in the series, but this is a, it's a sneak peek. I would assume that as they travel, both their sort of abilities and confidence grow. Okay, see that? I was like, if I put this cool machine gun, I'll sell more copies. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take it uh, one second. Let, let's thank some people here. Our sponsors of the stream, people that had to subscribe and support the stream right now and later has reset for 32 months and has gifted very kindly uh, two subs to Nappy Nuts. I don't know if I can say that. This is a family. <laughs> nap, nap, wait, not nap nine. I don't know. Um, James54, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, oh, gifted a, a sub one tier to Lou Grimm. Thank you. You did not have to do that. I, I can actually afford a, a a Twitch stream sub for, for my son. But I appreciate the uh, thank you. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Uh, Power2680 has sub for 45 months. Can you believe it? Like, And that's not even the longest. Like, we got Jeff Tay1, 51 months. And that's not even the most. Uh, Jorge4277, 54 months. Book and Red, 1442. Are you, aren't you at the Academy Awards? Aren't you waiting in line to get signatures from stars? Is they, are you waiting in line now? Or is it already that they've already probably already entered the auditorium? Hugs from Brazil. I hope to be in Brazil someday soon. Superhero Swimmer, uh, you stream just for my birthday. I appreciate it. Happy birthday, Super. Uh, happy birthday, Clayton. Appreciate you uh, coming on on your birthday. We're actually celebrating someone's birthday today. Not, um, it wasn't actually today, but we're celebrating it today. The walking stick is there 
Family fishing pole. It's makeshift. Okay. See, there, like, there's a thing. There's a story behind everything. It, it, look, exceptionally, he's poured his heart and soul into this project, and I think he'd be crushed if it, it didn't do well. Um, but I told him, like, look, uh, no one hits it out of the park on their first project. This would be one of many. Um, if you have a long and fruitful career, um, you'll learn a lot more from this than anything else that you do. And uh, so it'll be fun kind of watching from the sideline as that's happening. Um, Programmer Art, thank you very much, uh, has, uh, oh, Sauce, Steph the Sauce God has gifted some subs, so thank you very much for that. Javant03. Who else? Uh, we go down. Uh, no access at the Oscar says Book and Red 40, 1442. I, I'm a little disappointed. I figured you you had you, you'd have an angle, but um, Kanger Banger, 76 months. That's dedication. Hey Kanger, good to see you. The Constant Dabbler, 30 months in a row. Jeremy L. Joe, hey family. Joe the Bro, 92. Nomad Snake, why he? Golf Boy Sunday, Tooth, Fig Studios, R Raceland 0001, Alec Obert Art, Obert Art, Funny Bob 85, Daniel J. Bosco, Grand Admiral Bertus, What the Fan Art, This is Patrick, have all subbed and support the stream. Many using Prime. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you get a complimentary uh, Twitch. Um, subscription credit that you can gift to anyone not just this stream it's uh, I, I I use it to when we go raid other streams and uh, steel gun Carson McKinney metallic metallic Met metabolic ink sorry twin one two which is actually two different people I discovered when I met them in person um, Two people, not not pronouns. Uh, Abiza thirteen, Emperor Elric, Punker thirteen, PJ Beiser, and Ignite Comics. Forty months, yes. Gray Fox, thirty five one nine eight six, a stream as well. So, all right. So I feel pretty good about this layout. I'm gonna. Let's let's do the unveiling here, like bum 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 bum, and and I think Lucas, I I, I encourage him to create some music because he's actor, comic book artist, writer, uh, performer, storyteller, but also a, a very good um, pianist, right? And he composes his own music. And I said, like you know, later you should do like a soundtrack. To the comic, and that should be something that that the, the people that sub or support the uh, the project get access to. But anyway, so here we go. Got the two figures here, the main figures here, characters here. Their names are I forgot. Grim and Lou. Correct? Yes. I've read it, I've read the comic many times, but I, I'm just trying to. The names escape me at this moment. Yeah, Lou and Grimm, yes. All right, and then you've got this two-faced abomination here. This sort of... Uh, it's a family-friendly stream, so uh, it's a uh, orifice, orifice hole uh, type creature there. we got the father down here. Uh, and, and, he, and he's a badass sort of mage too but I think the mom is 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 even crazy uh, more powerful and because uh, she's the one that I don't want to give it away but she's the one that it, 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 the power runs through her side of the family am I right Lou Grim the mom is the head honcho right and they were trying to escape their past right they were part of something that was not ideal Maybe it got corrupted. They were trying to, like like many of us, trying to escape our past, and they basically found refuge in this little, in the grove. 
uh, sort of away from civilization. They protected themselves with these runes, these warding runes that basically create, sort of cast invisibility onto them. Their son, uh, Grimm, sort of accidentally took down the protective field to make a gift using one of the totems as a gift for, for his brother on his birthday. And then that kind of opened the door to these dark wraiths, these reapers to come. So that's what the first, yeah, we'll do a, we'll do an audio book. No, you know what? Uh, Luke would do an amazing audio book reading of it because uh, he does little voices. I shouldn't say little. He does these cool voices and uh, they're quite entertaining. As you might have seen on my Instagram feed, he did like a, he, he was doing this British voice, and I think a lot of people on social thought he was British for a long time because he had his own account that was, was just very separate. But anyway, so this, the mother shot here, it's going to be more of an upshot. Like this is the downshot of the father. So she's going to, I'm going to twist this. Like, so these are the kind of refinements that you make. It's kind of like, it's more of a moment of desperation, like. She's got her hair in a mess, cuts on her face. She has that look of like, oh my god, like, and uh, there's going to be all sorts of crazy energy coming off of here. And then you have this sort of wraith, this dark figure, and the, these crows over here. And you can see kind of from this playful, Joker-esque smile that they delight in there. In their evilness, so to speak. And, and this isn't even the main villain, uh, but I think visually it just looks kind of cool to have here. And then even the style that I'm drawing, I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking Joe Mad because Joe Mad to me is like the guy. He he kind of bridged Western style art with Eastern, you know, manga art. Uh, I don't know if that's what I'm gonna do it in, but I'm thinking of that kind of chunky. Style and then also just FYI for those who support it, uh, the fourth issue on it's it's in black and white, right? Uh, so it looks more like traditional manga, but it reads left to right. Never twenty eight. Where do you fit the title of the comic without covering the main traits of the the characters? Well, I'm not great at that kind of planning, but if you look, like the uh, the logo is see through, right? So. I could put it up here, but because this is a variant cover, you could uh, easily put Wallow here, right? Like the logo, right? See through up there. Or you, you don't put it at all and you just do it in text like uh, like we do at DC. Some of the, I don't know what we call them, Virgin because they don't have the trade dress. You could literally just put Wallow in white lettering, you know, um, variant edition, number one, you know, whatever. Put that over there, okay? So that's kind of what I've got. Um, and so in future streams, I am going to uh, do more of this. Uh, I am going to be indisposed for a while. I've got some travel coming up. I'm going to be um, uh, in Paris at the end of March. But there's travel before that. If you follow me on in Instagram, uh, you'll see. I, I don't want to spoil where I'm going to be. But I, there's a bunch of travel it's, and then I'm going to end up in Paris at the end of the month um, there to support the uh, French launch of the DC Super Powered documentary, the three-episode uh, series that I was a producer on. It kind of talks about the history of DC. Um, it's going to be released in France. There's some escape rooms I'm going to... Um, and I'm doing a store signing at Album, sort of the West... Uh, the complex shop in Paris that sells Western, you know, English... In English comic books really close to the Notre Dame uh, I don't know any of you guys in Paris uh, live in Paris but actually this, the signings are all sold out so I don't I feel like I'm hyping it to the wrong people I mean it's already it's done like it's it's already it's, it's complete as they say in, in, in other languages right so um, Cool. I'm glad you have all the cards in Marvel Snap. That's awesome. Voodoo Magic 5. You may need a Joe Mad alt cover. Ah, uh, you know, I, I wanted to start with, uh, um, you know, uh, Lucas and I st 
you know, we created a list of people. I, I wanted to start with people. I approached people that um, you know I've known for a long time, uh, friends of the family, uh, and, and Ryan Benjamin. Ryan's known Luke since he was a little kid. Uh, same with Dustin Wynn and uh, J. Scott Campbell. So uh, someday. Anyway, so we're up and coming up to the end of the hour session. Um, I think what we're going to... Oh, I did want to challenge you guys with one thing. So uh, Luke and I were kind of talking right before the stream, like what, how, what, can, we, what can we do to kind of engage you guys, draw you in even more into this project. Um, on the Discord channel, and if those of you that are new, we actually have a uh, Discord channel that is linked to this stream and that's where people get uh, updates on, on when the next streams are going to be and uh, appearances. And there's just general chatter, conversation. I will post up sneak peeks about art, of, of my art, even before I put on Instagram. Some stuff I put on Discord that never even makes, makes it to Instagram. Uh, Instagram. And um, we're talking about, like, it would be cool if uh, you guys wanted to do your own fan art of Wallow. There is, in the Discord channel, there is a um, channel that is appropriate for links or for uploading your art. And then he, uh, Luke and I will go through uh, the work that you guys put up and, and pick one and, and um, you know, publish it in the book. You'd be paid a nominal fee. Um, uh, but I thought it might be kind of fun for some of you who are aspiring artists uh, that want to get your work kind of seen more broadly to include that in there. Uh, and I know there are some others that uh, Luke has found through his own Instagram feed that will be included in that. All right, let's go look at chat and let's see if uh, in the remaining minutes that we have here. And we're going to go uh, raid someone at the end of this, too. Did I explain it correctly, Lou, Grim? Everything makes sense? You can correct me in, in chat. And say. It's a short and sweet stream. What's the deadline for? Oh, good question. Um, I would say the next two weeks. You know, two weeks. Uh, when you do the art, if it's digital, make sure it's high enough resolution. Um, and that, you know, you'll email us a link to the high-res file. And if there's more than one winner, we might, you know, do a collage. I don't know, like two or three. Um, but anyway, so that's what's going on here at uh, Shea Lee, at the house, at the household. Um, I do have to depart a little early, like I said, because we're celebrating someone's birthday. And I want to take care of that. So um, I'm going to be gone. I, I won't stream probably till first, I'm thinking maybe first Sunday in April. April 1st? April 1st is one thing. Is that, is that a Sunday? No. The 31st. Unfortunately, that's a travel day. So let's... April 7th? Uh, I'm going to be in... Uh, you know, I said Charleston Comic Con, but I'm actually... it's The convention I'm going to in South Carolina is in Greensville. So... It's the Comic Con in Greensville for any of you who are um, planning on going to that. So I'm going to that show on the 6th, which would make. I could do the 7th, but it would be in the afternoon like this. So potentially a 5 o'clock stream on the 7th, if not um, the morning of the 14th. All right. And it seems like a long way away, but time goes quickly. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in on this special afternoon stream. I also want to uh, thank PK for um, being our mod here. I want to thank you guys for indulging me as I kind of walk through this project with you all and share my thoughts. Oh, and there's going to be a torpedo sign. Yeah, Eric Fisher Art. Hey, good to see you again. Um, so John Domain, owner of Torpedo Comics, very good friend of mine, best man at my wedding, family friend. Uh, you know, I was just talking to him about this project and, and how excited we were and how excited Luke was for, for doing this project. And he said, like, hey, you should do a, a, a store signing in Vegas. 
um, sort of release party for it. And I think all the books are going to be fulfilled in June. And that's like the books are done, as you as you can see, the whole first three issues are done. So, um, but we need to collect the orders, uh, finish the campaign, then get it printed out. Um, so it will probably be in um, first weekend in July. It, it, just tentatively speaking, first weekend in July, Las Vegas. Me, me and Luke, uh, Luke will do a, a special appearance just for Wallow. Uh, it would just be signing Wallow content. If you didn't order the book through Indiegogo, we'll have extra copies there for people to buy. But it's really just about, you know, again, this is where I feel very comfortable helping him out. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to be sitting there laying out pages for him or drawing backgrounds or any of that stuff. But in terms of, like, spreading the word, doing a, a fellow signing because of this variant cover that will be out, uh, more than happy to do that. That feels very much in line with being a helpful hand without um, really uh, being a helpful hand, but also allow him to enjoy the journey that he's going to embark upon uh, and, and, and really um, enjoy the fruits of his labor, I think, right? So that'll be a cool moment to actually kind of celebrate a year's worth of work um, or a year and a half, uh, a year and a half, uh, years of work on this project because he has had his nose down to the screen on his device just drawing all the time uh, and making this project a reality. All right. Uh, I'm at Torpedo Con again in Glendale. I, it, I, I think John is going to do that. Um, is that usually in June or so? I'm not 100% sure, Eric, but it, it, when I know, it will be out. If he does it, I will. I will. Obviously, I, you know, as a good friend for John, I will definitely be there. All right. Oh, and the reason why it's called Wallow is that is that is the family name. So um, that's part of the, the mystery of it all. All right. Okay. Uh, where are we going to go stream, PK? Let me see. Hold on one second. All right, so I want to thank you all for coming out. I want to thank uh, Luke for uh, dropping in, sort of cameo appearance. And uh, I wish you guys a great rest of your weekend. And uh, um, I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. All right, and I will post this. I will post this layout in Discord. Um, and uh, I'll probably take it with me and kind of uh, start doing some of the details uh, and the pencils while I'm traveling. But I will probably ink it uh, on stream so you can kind of see that whole process. Okay? All right. Here we go.